Hey everybody, I'm looking at another laser here. Uh, this is the longer Ray 5. It is a 20 watt input, 10 watt output, which is the same um, size and strength as the Ortur Laser Master 3. Um, I built this enclosure actually for the Ortur, but most of these gantry style will fit in here. So uh, I'm gonna put the camera back on the tripod and get this thing fired up and see what we can do with it. This video is going to be relatively holiday related on account of it is looking mighty holiday-ish out here in west central Michigan. So here we go. This laser does not have uh, limit switches so what you need to do is move the laser unit to the zero zero position. So if it's stopped someplace else, just bring it carefully to the zero zero position and then turn it on. And then it will know that it's at home. This is a little bit different than most of the other lasers out there and that it has a completely integrated control panel where you can do all kinds of stuff. You've got, um, You've got your control panel for controlling the laser and moving it around. Um, so, and you can engrave straight from the micro SD card here. So, if you don't want to um, use a computer in your laser area, you can do it on the computer, set your files up, save it in here, and then you can run it right from here. Um, and then, this actually has a Wi-Fi setting that works really well with a web interface, and I'm not gonna go into that because the Louisiana Hobby Guy did a, a very in-depth technical review of this laser, and he covers all of those specific things as far as using the Wi-Fi, and it, it actually brings it up it actually assigns it an IP address and you can do everything from there. I'm going to be using it with Lightburn. I went ahead and purchased the Lightburn software license because it's an amazing program and if I'm going to be doing stuff with lasers then I need to, I need to have that. Um, this unit has an optional air assist kit that you can buy. If you're going to be doing any kind of cutting, I, I recommend getting the air assist kit. It's not terribly expensive. I would just go ahead and get the one that comes from longer. Um, for the Ortur, it comes integrated with, it comes ready for the, for the air assist kit, but I had to buy my own pump. Uh, and I just bought an aquarium pump and that, that works out fine. But um, the, the kit that's built for this thing is, is, I think it was like 80 or $90. And it, it will help cut when, you, when you're using the air assist and the honeycomb bed, it makes the cutting better because the air assist blows the soot and stuff out of the cracks and um, it allows airflow with the honeycomb. So my honeycomb is raised up off of the metal, there's an aluminum plate underneath it that protects it. Um, I have an exhaust fan in the back of this. So once I close this up, I've got this little fan that helps blow the smoke that way back toward the back toward the exhaust fan but I do not have the air assist kit for this so I'm going to do a lot of cutting with this and I'll show you that it works fine but it'll work better and, and you'll get a little bit less burning um, with the air assist kit so uh, that being said I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get one of these projects lined up I'm using three millimeter birch plywood that I got from Amazon. These are little pull down pins for the honeycomb table to make sure that your wood stays flat and stays put while it's while it's moving. Um, so I've been cutting this three millimeter plywood, so I already have the laser height focus length adjusted. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone for right now, but I'll show you how that works a little bit later. So I'm gonna put my safety glasses on. I think 
that's going to be good. This is the center cutout of another piece that I painted green with some metallic craft paint. So I'm going to cut out a couple of the little tree decorations that go on the gingerbread house and I'm going to cut it out of this already painted. So I have it positioned on the honeycomb bed where I think it needs to be to just cut these two. So I'm going to frame it and then if everything looks good we'll burn it. That should be fine. So what I'm going to do here is use that piece of cardboard as a template and I entered the size of the tile that I'm going to engrave in and I'm going to engrave that line on the cardboard and then I know exactly where to put the tile and have the text and everything be centered in where I want it. I focused the laser to the height where it's going to be engraving the tile so it's really too high for the cardboard, but it really doesn't matter because all I need is a line. It doesn't have to be even really very dark. So I'm gonna frame it, make sure we're still where we need to be. All right, so that's gonna be the outline of my tile. I'm going to take my tile, which I have two layers of paint on. I'm going to try not to move the damn honeycomb because that's what I end up doing all the time. And I'm trying to reposition things as moving the whole shebang, which is annoying. So I've done a test tile with the same number of coats of paint at different percentages. So this is at 8%, 9%, 10%. So I'm going to run this at 1200 millimeters at 15 or 16 percent probably maybe 15 looks pretty good and then that should just take off the top layer of the paint and then it will reveal what's underneath I don't even remember what color paint I have underneath this test or the, the silver tile but these are the settings I'm going to use um, 1200 millimeters and 15 percent
I'm going to try and do a glass cutting board. I got this from the Dollar Tree. It's basically this. It's got kind of a texture on top, but it's smooth on the bottom. And I'm painting it with just this super cheap tempura paint that I also got from the Dollar Tree. And then when I engrave it, I'll engrave it onto the onto this side, onto the bottom, so it will be it'll be mirrored. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna have issues with the burn because I couldn't apply the paint very smoothly. I was just using a, a foam brush and it's just all kind of streaky. And this is my second coat, so I guess this will be an experiment to determine whether or not the smoothness of the paint is, uh, you know, plays any part in that. So hit it with a heat gun, dry it faster. take this over to the house and wash the paint off and see what we got and I'll show you in a minute. That's not too bad. You can see right here where the tempera paint was not as even but it actually came out a lot better than I thought that it was going to given the streakiness of the tempura. So it etched on the back. So if you're gonna put food on this, like cookies, because now it's a cookie tray. I wouldn't use it as a cutting board because it's glass and I wouldn't wanna cut, use my knives on it, but you could put food on it. So anyway, if you etch on the back and mirror it, then it, you know, then it's on the other side. Cookies. I'm a cookie monster. This one may not seem very holiday-ish, but I watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy every holiday season, so it definitely feels like it to me. Bonus points if you know what the image is from. A diode laser can't cut clear acrylic, but it can engrave it. There are a lot of different options, but you have to do something similar to what I did with the glass, and it has to have some sort of treatment. Lori found these loom ornaments on Spruce and Linen's YouTube channel. She asked me if I could cut her out some blanks. So I made up a handful and then she took them and did all of the weaving and embellishing and decorating. And I think they turned out really, really cool. All right, this is the same three millimeter plywood. So the way that this laser focuses, they have this little cylinder. You can't see it. I'll try to remember to put a picture in the back, but there's a slot in the back here. You put that up under and then you let your thing down. There's two thumb screws and then it comes out. Pretty fine detail. Don't be a jerk. So there's that one. I don't know if it's going to focus on that or not. Okay. I got this plywood from Menards. It's supposed to be three millimeter, but I have found that it does not cut anything like 
any of the three millimeter that I got from Amazon. So, uh, well, I'm gonna have to just try to make that work. I got a spot there that didn't get cut and we'll see what happens. So I had to do a little bit of work with the X-Acto knife, so it's not perfect, but I was able to get everything undone and make a joint there. Here's the almost finished layered design that I worked out. There's a lot of glitter on there and I really wanted the lights to be brighter. So I got an LED tape light, but apparently when I was installing it, I messed something up in the tape light itself and the front half of it is now green instead of being white. So it's not exactly what I was hoping for, but I really like the way the top part of it came out. Well, hopefully I've given you guys some ideas as to what sorts of things that you can make with a laser engraver. It's really a great option for the holidays. I'll have a link in the description box below where you can get a discount on the longer Ray 5. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, y'all be safe out there.